Hello, I'm Atubot George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, I know God is teaching you something very important. And this week, the whole month we've been talking about prayer and, and why it's important to pray. You remember our text is from Luke 18 verse 1. Jesus taught them a par parable to stress the fact that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Praise God. So we've been looking at these things and and today we're going to go take it another step further but before we go on can we make demand for our daily bread are you ready join me right now in faith say father i demand right now my daily bread it's coming to me in jesus name amen praise god thank you lord jesus all right Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Daniel. Now, you know, on Monday, I spoke to you about uh, Jonah. Yeah, Jonah prayed from the belly of the fish. Now, that was a death situation he was involved with. And God heard him and brought him out. And then on Tuesday, we spoke about Esther. Esther had a challenge that was before her. The Jews were going to be exterminated on a certain day. And when she heard that, she decided to fast and pray. Now, she declared a three days fast. Now, I told you a lot of wisdom that God brought that day, you know, to now some of those things. See, see, the truth is, thank God for the teaching of God's word. Because even as a teacher, I learn when I teach. Why? Because I don't teach you what I already know perfectly. You see, I bring myself under the anointing of God. Now, that's what the teaching ministry is all about. A teacher doesn't tell you what he has studied, he has confirmed, and then he begins to teach. The confidence of a teacher is that he knows the God that he's talking about. See? Yes. So, a teacher is not just called and say, go and teach. No. <laughs> a teacher must have had an experience with God. Then the Lord now sends him. Go and teach my people this. But then, even what God, whatever God tells you to go and teach, you don't go and start studying it and then coming out and be giving points and teaching. No, you've got to, you see, you just subject your mind to the spirit of God that he would use you. Because if God says, I want you to teach on this, he's literally saying, I want to teach on this. Okay. So you as the vessel through him, whom he's going to communicate his truth you must learn to yield yourself and when you yield yourself then he will begin to bring forth utterance you see so some people who carry on the teaching ministry don't even understand this so i'm a teacher okay so you want to teach on um you want to teach on righteousness and then you take your bible and you begin to get your concordance now all those things come in handy truly when you study you bring out your concordance and you begin to look for everything that has to do with holiness and then you begin to package and arrange the scriptures and make your points and then you come and start teaching. Now that might look good, but that's not the teaching ministry. The teaching ministry is completely powered by the Holy Spirit. Now, you yield yourself to the Holy Spirit the same way a prophet will yield himself to the Holy Spirit. A prophet can never prepare enough before he goes and starts prophesying. There is no way you're going to see prophecies to prepare it. You understand what I'm saying? No. So you just have to learn to yield yourself to the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God will begin to give you utterance. It's the same thing a teacher does. A teacher yields himself to the Spirit of God. Then the Spirit of God begins to give him utterance. And then he begins to speak as the Spirit gives him utterance. So when I come to teach... I'm teaching you, I study, don't, don't get me wrong. I study well. In fact, my study most times is driven from places like this. When I finish teaching you on something, it drives me to study. Now that's why I love teaching the word of God because it keeps me going, praise God. Why? In the process of, of teaching, I will say something that even my mind knows that I'm hearing it for the first time. You understand what I'm talking about? Yes. But then I know it is true because I know the one that I'm yielding to. The Bible says, what if Satan just, I know Satan too. Okay. I know him. So 
when, when the Spirit of God is giving utterance. Now, I know also that sometimes the utterance he gives interferes with your knowledge. And when that happens, you must learn to save his mind from your knowledge. Yes, you must learn to do that. And that's what the teaching ministry is all about. Praise God. I know it because that's what the Lord has called me to do. So I said, I enjoy this because I also learn from it. It drives me to study. There are times I finish teaching and it will take me to study for days. Yeah, because now I'm trying to, because of a statement I heard myself say, because I listened to the, the message also, it, a statement I heard myself say, Really? Now, I believe it, but I've never heard it or heard it that way before. Then I go and say, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ha, 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 ha. Now I get it. Now that's what happens to me. Say, oh, Pastor, that seems to happen to me. It happens to me too. So I understand perfectly. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. So I'll show you how um, Esther prayed. So yesterday, no, on Tuesday, I spoke about how if you have to deal with someone, you know, because sometimes familiarity, you just think my brother is the governor or the president. My, you know, you think that's it. No, you must learn to deal with the spirit behind that throne. Now, when we say the spirit behind that throne, don't start thinking an evil spirit. No, it's not an evil spirit that is behind that throne. It's a good spirit. <laughs> God has ordained every tool. Now, that's why the Bible says we should not speak against people in authority. Why? Because when you do, you're not speaking about them. You're speaking against the spirit that is behind that throne. Pastor, so if it's a good spirit, why doesn't he make the people do what is right? That's not how it works. That's not how it works. But you as a child of God, if you understand the way it works, you can turn things around. Now the problem is most of us don't. Most of God's children don't understand it. I was teaching on Tuesday for you to approach any God. Esther was approaching her husband. Yesterday we talked about this also. And she knew not to approach him as her husband. She knew to approach him as the king in whose mouth there was life and death. She knew. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So let's look at Daniel now. Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9. I want to show you something here as we talk about prayer. From verse 1, Daniel chapter 9 from verse 1. In that first day of, in that first, in the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years wherein the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. So Daniel recognized from studying the book of Jeremiah. So Jeremiah had lived, okay? And now this is Daniel's life, okay? Jeremiah had prophesied the desolation. Oh, you need to study, you need to study the prophecy of Jeremiah when he spoke about this. There was a drama that took place. <laughs> Maybe one day we'll look at it. But because we, we're talking about something different today. So Jeremiah had prophesied, 70 years, this thing is going to happen, okay? Now, here was Daniel studying it. And after studying it, he said, okay, you know what? Um, we, I need to pray. Now look at verse 3. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. He didn't just pray. He, sub, he, he said he prayed with supplication. And then he did something else. He added fasting. Then he put on sackcloth and ashes. No, then you rub ashes on your head. It's a sign of, look, nobody should bother me. I'm in mourning. 
That was the whole point. I'm in money. Nobody should bother me. And then he was like that and, and, and just waiting. Say, God, no, something is wrong. Something is wrong. I need your wisdom. Why, why would you say 70 years? So we, we're going to be here for 70 years. Can this matter be changed? Why 70 years? He wanted to know. See, he wanted to know. Now there are times you pray like that. You, you find something out in scripture. You know, just mm, 70 years. Ah, guys, man, how many years have we spent now? Ah, nothing will happen until 70 years. No, Daniel wanted to know from God, why 70 years? Why 70 years? Have you ever been driven to the place of fasting and prayer because you read the scripture? Or did you just read scripture and say, hmm, 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 hmm. Now, wow. No. This attitude is what is lacking in the church. We can pray for power. We can pray for glory. We can pray. But have you ever studied, you're studying scripture and you read something like, ah, ah. Now, now, Daniel was studying the book of Jeremiah. Maybe by the spirit of God, because it happened, you know, sometimes you just think, I, I just feel like studying, you know, the book of Ephesians or the book of Psalms or the book of Judges. I just feel like so. And then you just carry that. Like, ah, let me just study. And then you're reading and then you, you go to maybe chapter one and verse 18, like, and then you can't even continue. You begin to meditate and say, what's going on? How come did God really say this? Praise God. And then before anyone was happening, you're in fasting. Oh God, no, no, Lord. Lord, did you really say this? I have asked God that same question numerous times. Father, did you really say this? Praise <laughs> God. He said it. You said this. Why would you say this? And that's where wisdom have been given. Now that's what happened to Daniel. Daniel prayed and prayed. And now you, you can read the whole prayer he was praying. He wrote everything down. He prayed until verse 21. Yea, while I was speaking in prayer. Now that's later. He was talking. There are different kinds of ways we pray. There's a silent prayer. Yes. There are times you, you, you just stay silent before the Lord. It's a prayer. But this one, Daniel said, Yeah, while I was speaking in prayer. Even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening ovulation. Now, angels, I call the paratia gadasia. You see, I na musa barana kasia. Now, Daniel says something. He says, Gabriel. Now, Gabriel is an angel of God. Okay. Gabriel was cursed. He said, yeah, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being cursed to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. So, Gabriel came at this time when they were supposed to do the evening oblation, to do the evening prayers. Now, this was connected to the watches, okay? So, he says, And he informed me and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I am now comfort to give these skills, skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplication, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved, Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. So because Daniel set his face to understand, to know, God sent Gabriel. Say, hey, I know, but I, I wish you will understand how much the Lord wants to teach us. He said, as soon, these were the words of Gabriel. At the beginning of thy supplication, the commandment came forth. So, like, like say, the signal came. At the beginning of your supplication, the signal came. And when the signal came, I was commanded to bring you an answer. 
And then he began to unveil things to Daniel. Now you remember this same Daniel in, in chapter 10. I want you to follow something. Now remember what we just read. It says um, Darius was the king then. And then Darius was the king of Medes. Now Medes is, is like um, the Chaldees, okay? Now that's the same place Nebuchadnezzar reigned over. Now, now when you read chapter 10, you see from verse 1, In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Bethesda Shaza. And the thing was true, but the time I appointed was long. And he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. Now take note of the opening. In the third year of Cyrus the king, and now Cyrus is the king over Pesha. Now, this was more of an overthrow, okay? Pesha had come to rule over, um, um, what was it called now? The Chaldeans, okay? And a new king now rules. No more from the family of, 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 of what's his name now? Nebuchadnezzar or Ahasuerus, okay? A new kingdom have taken over the realm. Now, from Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel had participated in governance. Please understand this. You know how God exalted him, okay? Now, how did Nebuchadnezzar get to know about Daniel? He had given it, he had he had a dream, and then he had said, anybody who he called the, the wise men. Tell me the dream, give me the interpretation. They couldn't say, I'm going to kill all of you that are classified as wise men. Before then, the king had sent his, his ministers to select all the wise men that were brought in from Jerusalem. Okay, So Daniel was selected. And that's how the king began to feed them specially. So they were staying in special quarters. Why? Because of their wisdom, acknowledged wisdom. Okay, so they were enjoying all those privileges. And now the king comes and says, all these wise men, they are just deceiving me. If you can tell me the dream, then I'll believe the interpretation. They said, no, how? You tell us the dream. He said, nah, nah, nah. If you know the interpretation, then God should give you the dream. And he was going to kill all of them. So Daniel spoke up and said, no, please, can you allow? Now that's how Daniel was brought before the king. He told the king the dream, told him his interpretation. Now the king immediately made Daniel one of his senior officers in government okay now daniel never had any issues he would pray and receive answers instantly but now there was a new king ruling over the realm and this king truly did not know daniel now i'm showing you something here and you find daniel praying verse 2 chapter 10 in those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all till three full weeks were fulfilled. And in the four and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hidekel, then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed, clothed in linen, whose leons were guarded with fine gold and offers his body. He began to describe all these things. And then he said, I, I want to show you something now. Let's skip some verses. And all right. And behold, and hand, oh, 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 you need to see this. All right, verse seven. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, verse five. Then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins was guarded with fine gold and offers. His body also was like the bear, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lambs of fire, and his arm and his feet like in color of polished brass and the voice of his words were like voice of a multitude now think of what daniel was saying here and, 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 all right 
And I, Daniel, verse 7, alone saw the vision, for the men that were with me saw not the vision, but a great quickening fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. Hmm. Therefore I was left alone and saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me, for my comeliness was turned in me into corruption, and I retained no strength. Yet heard I the voice of his words, and when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face and my face towards the ground. Does this remind you of someone in the New Testament? John. Praise God. My time is up, but we're going to continue from here tomorrow. Praise God. Oh, Father, we, we, we just love your truth coming into our hearts. Don't hold back, Lord. Just, just give us that which is true. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.